Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we want to talk about another medical topic which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or short COPD. It's a chronic inflammatory lung disease that causes obstructed airflow from the lungs. So when we're talking about COPD and people suffering from it, they have an increased risk of developing heart disease, lung cancer, and also other pathophysiological conditions. It's usually caused by long-term exposure to irritating gases or particulate matter, and most often from cigarette smoke. With proper management, however, most people with COPD achieve good symptom control and also quality of life. And it's also feasible to reduce the risk of other associated conditions. Now we want to take a closer look at epidemiology, pathophysiology, phenotype, diagnosis and treatment. Worldwide, around 18 million people are affected from COPD, whereby men and women at equal rates. It accounted for 3.2 million deaths in 2015, 90% of those occurring in developed countries. Usually those who suffer from COPD are above the age of 40. When we're talking about pathophysiology, it's important to know that the lungs rely on a natural elasticity to breathe air out of the body. And now we have two main reasons for COPD, which are emphysema, and this is the medical term for air filled spaces within the lungs, caused by the breakdown of the alveoli, which are responsible for the gas exchange, as you see depicted here, and bronchiolitis. The latter is an infection's condition, and this results in the production of more mucus, and this further narrows the tube, as depicted here. A major risk factor is, I just want to say it again, tobacco smoking. Just imagine that 80% of those affected are current or ex-smokers. People with COPD are usually coughing a lot. They also have a history of upper respiratory symptoms and it's feasible that they just think that it's a long-lasting cold. There's also shortness of breath, especially also in those at younger ages. And it's also possible that in advanced stages or end-stage pulmonary disease, it occurs at rest and can be present at all times. The problem is that shortness of breath is a source of anxiety and also poor, poor quality of life. So people try in advanced stages to breathe through pursed lips. This can improve the symptoms in at least some people. A very characteristic sign of COPD, but a rather uncommon one, is the so-called barrel chest. Another problem of COPD is that in advanced stages it leads to a high blood pressure in the lung arteries. And this in turn strains the right ventricle of the heart. This is called a core pulmonale and this leads to symptoms like leg swelling and bulging neck veins. As indicated before, COPD occurs often along with several other conditions due to the shared risk factors. For diagnosis, there are various ways. For example, pulmonary function tests. Here, most commonly, a spirometer is used. This is a technique to measure the airflow obstruction. Of course, you can make X-rays and CT scans to show the potential presence of an emphysema and also to rule out other conditions. It's also possible to make an arterial blood gas analysis to determine how efficient the gas exchange works and how much oxygen is within the blood. Even though genetic disorders are relatively rare, it's possible to make laboratory tests to determine the exact cause of COPD. When talking about treatment, the disease is incurable, but you can lessen the symptoms and delay progression. And in early stages, no treatment at all may be required. Of course, if someone is smoking, this should be stopped immediately. There are also pharmacological treatment options like bronchodilators and also steroids or a combination of both. In severe cases, it could be necessary to make an oxygen therapy or rehabilitation program or also surgery. 
even though this is not that common. This was a brief overview of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe.